Avid, are you ever going to learn from your mistakes? It sure doesn't seem so. You've been all over the map on the last several years. You know, to put some things into perspective, what this is about is they recently did renaming again and started dropping prices again. Uh, they changed Flex back to Ultimate. It wasn't even Flex for very long. They changed it back to Ultimate. And then they dropped the price a couple hundred dollars because if you didn't know it or not, Avid subscription only, you know, and that's another thing. They flip flop and back and forth and back and forth. You know, I, I, I predicted uh, well before they went all subscription that they would. And a lot of people said I was crazy. And then they did. And then all of a sudden there was a lot of outrage from a lot of customers, um, folks online like me and some other people saying, come on, this, this is just not right. Um, you know, if you want to offer both, go ahead and offer both. I think that's fine. Give people choices, but don't force them into something. You know, um, I, I actually, about eight months or so ago, had a, um, a phone call with uh, Fabrice, who's the vice president of product development, where, you know, it was, it was as a response to a video that I put out, uh, really kind of pleading and begging with Avid, but also being a little bit critical. You know, I'm a Pro Tools user, or I was, I should say, a Pro Tools user for over two decades. Been an HD, HDX, HD native. Uh, I've really kind of jumped around on the various, uh, really, uh, I guess, on the high end part of their, of their, um, you know, portfolio. And I'm a huge Pro Tools fan. I, 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 it fits like a glove. I love it. I think Avid makes great products. I just think they make bad decisions, really bad decisions. And in that, in that particular conversation with Fabrice, I told him, I said, I said, look, you know, there's a couple issues that people seem to have with you, and, and you seem to be in a little bit of denial about that. And, and, and that is, one, your pricing structure. You know, even before they went subscription, the price, annual pricing structure for that DAW, considering there's absolutely nothing special about Pro Tools, absolutely nothing at all. Really, the only advantage it has is it's, it's better. And I would even say somewhat better at editing than most others out there. But it is still better. I concede that. Uh, everything else really lags behind in so many ways. And it took them a very, very long time to even start to begin to catch up. And, and so there's these kind of recurring problems that seems to happen. And I don't, I don't get it. And I told Fabrice, I said, I said, I said look, man, um, you know, if you just came out with a reasonable price, I think in a fair one, it's understandable. You know, something that's competitive with your other competitors, you know. Uh, you know, look and go see what, you know, uh, PreSonus charges for upgrades to Studio One. Same thing with Nuendo, Steinberg, um, you know, the, the rest of them. And, you know, Cubase, obviously, uh, all part of Steinberg. You know, and, and, and they'll allow you to go years without upgrading. And, and even then, now the, uh, the cost is not outrageous. You know, and and so if your features are that compelling, that alone should motivate people to want to upgrade. Um, but you went into this annual fee, uh, and you and you called it uh, support. Well, I, you know, support's kind of a joke. I think anybody who's ever actually tried it or used it, uh, you'll you'll find a few success stories out there, but not many of them, not many at all. Um, and so. I find it hard to understand why they couldn't accept that feedback, you know, and then, and then as a result of that conversation, I got a feeling, I said, you know what? I get a feeling, they didn't outright say it directly, but I got a really strong feeling that they were going to go 100% subscription, and they did, and I predicted that in a video, um, and, and, I, and I thought that was horribly disappointing, and, and that's when I said, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm just not going to, after two decades of using uh, their hardware, their software, and I was fully integrated. Back there used to be a 24-channel decommand. It's actually sitting on my dining room table in our formal dining room in the other room. You know, I'm going to be selling that soon. And, 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 and that really kind of kept me there. And so, you know, this notion, it was already bad enough having to pay a ridiculous annual fee. And then you talk about, you know, changing to subscription only. Now, if you were a Pro Tools uh, perpetual owner, uh, which basically means you own it. You know, I, I think some of these names they come up with are ridiculous, but um, which means you own it, right? You own it for life. You know, you, you could continue on with that, but the minute you didn't pay that annual fee, you're out of luck. And so for the longest time, they, they, they took away the ability 
um, to even um, get back on track. You know, let's say, for example, you didn't jump on right when they first went all subscription, and they took that ability away and then realized, hey, a lot of these users that are perpetual owners, you know, they're not upgrading. They're not upgrading at all. And so they kind of had no choice but to kind of eat some crow and then bring it back. And it's still out there today. If, if you own an older version of Pro Tools, you can get up to date on the perpetual. You can do that. Um, but you're still going to pay just an insanely ridiculous fee annually to be able to, to stay up to date and current. And God forbid you ever skip it because you're in deep, deep, deep trouble. And, and so I saw the writing on the wall, and I was, a, I was really concerned about moving away, very, very, very concerned, because I'd used it for so long, and to have to relearn another DAW was, was, was kind of a daunting task. Well, I did it, and I love it. You know, currently today I'm on Nuendo, and the only reason I really went Nuendo over Cubase is Steinberg had a really great sale one, one time, and, and it was only like 100 bucks more, so I jumped on it because I wanted to toy around and play with posts and some other things like that. I don't really do that a lot, but I figure for $100, I'll, I'll check it out. And, and so I actually love it. It was hard at first uh, because of the terminology was so different. I also uh, uh, bought Studio One, and I love Studio One. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I really, really, really like it. I also have Logic and Reaper. Um, you know, uh, and the only reason I really didn't say Studio One is because I have, when I, when I pulled my D command out, I bought an SSL UFX 8. I have two of those, so 16 faders. And, and it's just better. It's much more integrated with Cubase slash Nuendo than it is Studio One. Uh, had it been more integrated with Studio One, I would have just stayed there. Uh, it, it's kind of okay with Studio One, but it, it's much, much better in, in Cubase and slash Nuendo. And so that was a decision for doing that. And, and I, I don't regret it for one second. You know, I, I, at the time I moved away, I was on a Carbon, uh, and the Carbon is a fantastic interface. I mean, the, the, the uh, analog to digital conversion, digital analog conversion is actually is, is really superb. Uh, the mic preamps are really good in it, although I primarily use all outboard mic preamps here in, here in my studio. Um, but, it, but it's really a fantastic unit, built like a tank, and I had no issues with it whatsoever and really enjoyed using it. Um, but obviously, if I'm going to move away, I needed to move away from that. So I sold it, and I bought a Fireface UFX Plus, and uh, it sounds just as good, just as good, built just as solidly, $1,000 cheaper, um, and, 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 and everybody knows RME has the very best drivers on the planet. I mean, just rock solid, always have for decades. I don't know decades, but a long time, probably close to decades. Um, but, but anyway, they, you know, they make a great interface, and so I really enjoy using it. So I don't quite understand this whole thing. Like they changed, ult, you know, they went flex back to ultimate. They dropped the subscription price by two hundred dollars. They keep bringing these these specials back to where you can all of a sudden for a little while you could buy perpetual at the dealers, but then that's taken away again, even though it was never quite updated on Avid's site. And and I think one of the things that Avid had a little bit of delusion about was when they, um, you know, w w during the pandemic you know, their subscription base and their user base really went up significantly. But so did a lot of other music manufacturers. That really caused uh, guitars to fly off the shelves, equipment gear to fly off the shelves, all these things, because people were stuck at home and they wanted to be creative. And maybe they really hadn't given it a serious consideration before, but hey, well, I'll try it now. I'll do this now. Well, now we're heading into a recession and everything's dropping off and music dealers and everything are dropping prices on everything, as you'd expect. Um, and then Avid's realizing, well, crap, nobody's jumping on our subscription. You know, uh, nope, nobody seems to be jumping on, or certainly not at the rate that they had uh, kind of sold their investors on. And, and so I, I honestly don't get it. You know, I really wish you would listen, Avid. Um, you've got great people working for you, but, but the, uh, the, the senior leadership is just out of touch. I think they're trying to, it's almost like they're, you know, it's, it's almost like they're, you know, 40s and 50-year-olds uh, trying to, to live and act like they're back in their 20s. Well, you know, there's a reason guys like me and some of you out there don't do that because we've gotten older, we've matured, we've gotten wiser, um, you know, and in all those years, we, we kind of grow and evolve. Well, why can't you? It seems like you're trying to live on your heyday 
instead of continuing to advance because everybody else around you seems to be doing that but you. And I, I really don't understand it. You know, let's take a look at a couple of quotes that, um, that I pulled out over at the DUC regarding this one topic. All right, so first up here, this is the subject of this particular one is Pro Tools Flex renaming back to Ultimate. Uh, and, and I pulled this off of the Avid User Forum, which is called the DUC. The best tool offering innovation, that was the tool of choice of industry professionals. There was something special about using Pro Tools. These days are long gone. After a decade of directionless management, ridiculously continued pricing structure changes and rebranding, uh, ambling support and slow-paced development, Avid have mastered just two things, how to kill your credibility as a corporation and how to make your users feel utterly worthless. Next up on that same particular thread, when I saw this news, I thought it was cringy, ridiculous, and frustrating. This past year has been such a debacle with each Pro Tools release. The problem with, with Avid and Pro Tools is they continually lag behind everybody else. You know, they're always playing catch up. Uh, they're never really hardly ever leading anymore when many, many, many moons ago they did, um, but they're not anymore. And, and, and so you look at something like Apple Silicon that came out two years ago really, really, really kind of a new development, really powerful computers, um, and, they're, and they're still not supporting it two years later. I mean, that's ridiculous. Everybody does it now. There's really nobody that's not supporting it, uh, certainly that I'm aware of, and I own a lot of, you know, virtual instruments and plugins and DAWs from various manufacturers, and every one I own are up to date and solid and good to go. Avid, if you're supposed to be the leader and you're paying this ridiculous fee for this annual support, uh, you think you maybe should try to support your user? I mean, what a novel idea, I guess. I, I don't know, but yet again, we see yet another flip-flop from Avid. They just can't seem to figure things out, and it's pretty discouraging if you think about it. So if you're currently an Avid user, I would strongly consider, and I would, I would strongly recommend to you that you consider uh, looking at another DAW. You'll save a whole lot more money on the long term, you'll get way more features, and you'll actually get better support in the vast majority of them. For those of you considering Pro Tools, considering that option, you know, you, you, this industry standard stuff, uh, especially if you're in the home projects, studio, you know, it's meaningless, completely, utterly meaningless. Yes, if you're doing label work or you're doing post film, broadcast, things like that, you know, Pro Tools and Media Composer uh, are, are important to your workflow only just because everybody's just kind of used to it. It has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that it's better. But if you don't fall into that category like the vast overwhelming majority of us, um, I, I cannot recommend going with Avid or Pro Tools. I just can't. You know, if Avid ever changes and goes back to being a reasonable company, that actually is trying to balance making a profit, which is important for any business, uh, you know, balance making a profit, but actually doing that and creating and maintaining a loyal fan base by giving compelling reasons to stay there, both from a cost perspective as well as a feature perspective. If they were to ever do that, I would go back to recommending and again a heartbeat. Um, and so I, I think you've really got to consider these things long and hard. I'm, I continue to be disappointed, and it's it's really unfortunate. Um, you know, it's like seeing this massive giant just start to fall and frail and and become old and tired, and and that's kind of what it's like in so many ways. So you know, you know, let me know in the comments section down below. Tell me what you think. If you think I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Uh, if you think I'm right, well, put your comments down below. Let your voices be heard by Avid. Uh, it's just unfortunate. It's really sad. It really is. So, okay, so if you like the things I talk about on this channel, and they're not always like this. Actually, they're rarely like this. Um, but if but if you like that, uh, do me a favor, hit that like, that subscribe, and notification bell. You know, go check out some of my other videos. Um, you know, I work really hard for you guys. I will not be bought and sold by any manufacturer, um, as you can clearly tell here. Um, and so you're always going to get straight talk. You're going to get my opinion. Does that always mean I'm right? No, no, it doesn't. But it's my opinion after doing this for a very, very, very long time. Uh, that's what happens when you're an old fart like these, this guy right here. So until next time, I hope all of you have a great day. Bye-bye.